So here's the conversation in Ezekiel. Here's the theme of Ezekiel. The whole theme of Ezekiel, in essence, is that your sinfulness as an individual got us as a group into a problem with God. Now, human nature loves to blame the group, but always leaves out the individual. You realize a group is just a bunch of individuals. How easy is it for us to disconnect that what we see in a group of people is the culmination of the individuals in that group. That's true in the church, and that's true in the culture. And because we tend to disconnect the individual, we tend to look for hope from some other source than just changing our own hearts, turning back toward God and trusting God's plan. And so this is the general theme of Ezekiel's conversation. Your individual divorcing of God, your individual sin has brought corporate calamity on all of Israel. And now you're exiled, now you're in bondage, now you're under siege, under threat, all because you as individuals walked away from God because of your sinful nature. Now, go to verse 30, it says, I look for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land. Somebody who would stand in the gap at the wall, build the wall and stand in the gap. So I would not have to destroy it, but I found no one. Now think about this. So I will pour out my wrath on them and consume them with my fiery anger, bringing down their own heads for all they've done, declares the sovereign God. Let's look at this in a broad view, come in more tight with it, and then bring it to our life today. Notice this conversation. After God describes all the wickedness that's taking place, notice the heart of God. He declares what's wrong. He calls out sin for what it is, calls it for what it is, and presents the inevitable judgment that is due. But here is the goodness of God at work. He's still looking for somebody who can stand in the gap and make a difference. He's still looking for one person, almost like the call of Abraham to God, saying, God, if I could just find one person, would you save the city? I believe it's amazing to understand this conversation that even in the most difficult and despicable state of sin, God is a redemptive God, a faithful God, a just God, a true God, and he still wants to see mankind redeemed like he did then. He wants to see it even today. However, there must be a posture of repentance toward God. Repentance is not just a thing that says, oh God, I'm sorry I did this. Repentance is literally the idea I am vomiting up my sin never to return to that again. We're to get rid of this, repent and walk away from it, not dabble in it, not dabble in it, not go back for it, but say I'm never going there again. That's what repentance is. 